Here is the fill of flour mold. Now, when I actually made the, uh, when I did book one, so in book one, I did several of the uh, products in book one in the ultimate filler flowers where I used uh, like little calyxes on the jasmine and on the stephanotis things and for those I used a small FMM cutter and this is traditionally what I've used for when I do uh, sweet peas when I te teach my sweet peas but when I was uh, coming up with um, making this larger sweet pea, um, I found that the actual, the little uh, plumeria or jasmine mold cavity on the Flower Pro Ultimate Filler Flower actually makes a much more realistic sweet pea calyx. Um, it's more really more natural looking and it has a very nice look on it. Um, and you can see here the little calyx, so it has a nice, uh, nice shape to it. And so this works really well for the sweet pea and especially the fact that this sweet pea is a little bit larger, um, this works perfect for that. Now when we, when we make the sweet pea calyx, we're going to be um, you doing the calyx. There is a little typo on here, you actually need five calyxes because obviously we need a calyx on all five components. But you're going to rub a little white fat vegetable shortening into the jasmine plumeria cavity. Now remember this cavity is what we use for jasmine but also for little plumeria as well. So those are shown on the videos. So you're going to take a little bit of your um, Crisco or your shortening, just rub that into the cavity here. And then you're going to take number four size balls of paste. Now, the quite a smallish ball of paste, all right? So we're gonna be using a number four size small, a uh, number four ball of paste. So you need five of those. And I've already put three calyxes on, so I'm just gonna show you two of these. So it's just gonna be a number four size, okay? So then you're gonna measure another four balls of paste the same size. Just pop those underneath a little container just to keep those, um, to stop them drying. And then we're going to use, um, now I'm using a Dresden tool. If you don't have a Dresden tool, you can use uh, your companion tool. Um, and basically what we're gonna do is just gonna take your paste. And remember you can use just a little bit of corn flour, but just having a little bit of vegetable um, fat shortening in there will help. So you just press this just gently into the mold. And then you're just gonna push this into the cavity with your Dresden tool and your finger, okay? You can use the cosmetic sponge as well, but we're just pushing this in. Now you can also use your, you can just use your little companion tool if you don't have a Dresden tool. You can see what you do there is you just roll down. Just make sure you stay within the perimeter of the mold. And then you're just gonna, can you can just press that on. So you see that will, a number four size will fill the mold up level. Okay, now you could also do like we've done on calyxes and things, you could actually use the little uh, scraper and scrape that off, but generally I just press this in. Now, you're gonna remove this from the mold. So you see how you have this beautiful little jasmine or plumeria. So this is beautiful to use on cards, you can use this in all different applications. We're gonna just place that onto a cosmetic sponge, and then we're gonna use your, um, so then we're gonna take the needle tool end of the companion tool, all right, needle tool end of the companion tool, and we're just gonna make that a little bit uh, pointed. So literally what I'm doing here is I'm just using the needle tip end, and I'm just gonna go like this, like this, and like this, you see? So you almost get that little slight point on there. If you do have any overfill, which means where you press the paste in the mold, it just has come over the edge, just press in there with your, um, your tool. Now then what we do is you're gonna turn this over, I'm gonna show you this twice, gonna turn this over, Going to take a little bit of egg white or obviously I'm doing air drying clay so I'm just going to put a little bit of that just into the center part here just a little tiny bit remember it will actually stick but usually I just do this as an added security and then you take your components I'm going to show you first of all the small bud and what you do there is you're going to push this through and pull this up and then you want uh, one of these pieces at 12 o'clock that means it's going to the one at 12 o'clock will sit over the top of where the line is, okay? Does that make sense? So I bring this into camera there, you can see. So this is where the line is. So think of like a clock face, you have one of these at 12 o'clock. And you're just gonna mold this around. So you just sort of mold it onto the wire here, like so. But you need to make sure, as I said, there's one at 12 o'clock, which is like the top of the flower or the bud. Now on the, um, so then you're going to continue this. So I'll show you this again. So pretty straightforward, and as I said, just using the little plumeria, jasmine. Remember, in the in the one on equipment, we talked about the, you know, Dresden tools, and you know, some of the equipment is sort of very much it 
doesn't really matter what brand, but I've always preferred personally the, um, the FMM one, which is this cream one I'm using as a Dresden tool. The gem one, which is a black one that uh, PME own gem cutters. So, um, but the black one, the gem one, I found that the veining tool is almost too sharp on that. Um, this one is just sort of almost just right, okay? And then there's, you know, like Wilton have one. I mean, there's obviously different ones and the PME yellow and white one as well. A lot of people use those. It's just what you get used to, okay? So it would be like any, you know, an artist or potter, they have a particular like tool they like. So just make sure that you press that in. You're gonna flex your mold like that. All right, so you have your little, but this is really pretty, as I said, to use just as a flat little flower for a cake. And then with your companion tool, just gonna, just gonna pull that. So you're doing this on the front of the flower. So you're just gonna create that like slight point on your little petals there, if you need to pinch those. You're gonna turn it over, okay? And then we'll put a little bit of glue. Now also, when you're using um, the glue like this, all right, so when you're using your glue, remember, I usually just keep this, I thought it's got a silicone tip, just keep it in a little zip top bag. If you do ever find, because sometimes you get a little bit of glue like dries out in a lump, and if you're keeping the lid off a long time. So if you are ever, um, just to show you this, just get my little out of my drawer here. This is actually a, um, something I use for piping as well. You can find these on Amazon. This is a, a gas, it's a gas jet clean, a cleaner. And what it actually is, is to clean gas jets on grills and things like that. It was like $8. And it's got almost like a little file on here. So it's actually almost got like these different size. But I use this sometimes for piping tips as well, because even on a piping tip on nozzle, you can use this. And then what you would do is you'd actually go in the inside there or you go in the top and then you just would clean, clean that out all right, and then you generally just give it a wash and then that will come out no problems, all right? But if you do have any issues with the glue not coming out, but it's just a gas, so I think I, call, I did a search on gas jet um, cleaner and uh, little, uh, but as I said, it's a little, um, if I find the link, I'll put it on there for you so you can see what it is. But it's actually useful if you're doing for, as I say, clearing out little bottles and uh, piping nozzles and tips as well, okay? All right, so, and then when this goes on, so onto the flower, all right, so when you, when you see this, so again, so you're just gonna push this through like this. And then what you want is you want just one. So remember, this is the sort of like the front of the flower. So you want one at 12 o'clock. So when you do this, all right, I'll pull the phone, but you see how I want one of those right at 12 o'clock, you see? So it's gonna be like at 12 o'clock so you have, obviously, this is the, the bottom two here. So you see how you have, so because this is like the top of the flower here, so you want 12 o'clock at the top. And you're just gonna mold that around. Now on the flower, you're just gonna mold that around just a little bit, and you're just gonna pinch it. And if you can see any of your paste, like your pink paste at the back there, just pinch that with your paste, with your scissors and things like that. Now, um, as far as shaping the flowers and buds go, so the flowers and buds need to be, the two buds, uh, the two open buds and the bud here, you can take a pair of pliers, and then what you do is you're gonna bend it over to almost give you this sort of hook there, like a bit like a shepherd's crook on the top there. You don't want, it doesn't wanna be too severe, and if you don't have pliers, you can just use your fingers, all right? So you can use your fingers there as well. But so you're just gonna just take this, bend this over your fingers like this, you're gonna get this open so these will be on the three, these three buds, okay? And then once you get these on the three buds, you're going to then use your, so on the flowers, as you can see there in the photograph, all right? So in your photograph here, the flower wants to, so you're gonna come about down about two and a half centimeters, okay? And you're just gonna bend it forward and you're just gonna bend it like, a bit like a sort of a swan's neck. So you're just gonna get this sort of shape here, see? So, because the, the flowers will sit forward like this, all right? So they're gonna have about a two and a half centimeter, and you're just gonna have obviously a little bit of a curve here, okay? And that's sort of how you put your flowers in. But once you get these together, you're, they will be fine. Now, um, next I'm gonna move on to show you the tendrils, all right? So the tendrils are, um, we're gonna be making three tendrils. So this is on the second page. Um, so you're gonna wrap from the center, of one third 28 gauge green or white wire, continue past the end about two inches, five centimeters, then wrap around the shaft of the companion school to create the curl of the tendrils. Now the, um, 
Sweet peas have these sort of little curly tendrils. This is what it actually like grabs hold of the fence or the trellis. Um, this technique I use also on Morning Glory. I use for grapes. So there are several different flowers I teach that are vines that when they sort of grow up the trellis or a fence, they basically use these little tendrils to attach. So what we're going to do is going to take your wire. Remember, this is your, you should have three wires left um, from the other day. And all we're going to do here now is just going to take your tape. So just stretch your tape a little bit like this. Okay. And then what you're going to do is you're going to start about, um, so it says here you're going to start off, uh, um, so we're going to start here about going to, uh, one third wire and then continue past the end about uh, to the two, two inches, five centimeters. All right. So you want to start about halfway down the wire. All right. And what you're going to do is you're going to tape from here to the end. So you're just going to start taping around the wire like that. And then when you get to the other end, all right, so when you get to the end of the wire, you just carry on just as though the wire is still there, you see? And then what you then do is you just twist this. All right, so you see how you twist this. So what you're getting, you're getting almost like just a twisted stem. Now this technique is also what I use for pine cones. If you watch my pine cone flower probe, my uh, Nicholas Lodge brand uh, proud, uh, pine cone mold, you'll see how I make the pine needles. So because if you, you thread, use your floral tape, you go around your finger and then you wire it, you can use those for leaves and things as well. So we use this technique for quite a lot of different applications. I'm just going to cut that. All right, so this wants to be about five, about uh, five centimeters, about two inches or so. And then all you do is you're just going to take this, all right, and you're just going to wrap it around the shaft and just continue with the tape itself. All right, and this will give you a little curly cue. And you can just sort of open that up or you can leave it really curly. It's up to you, all right? And that's sort of how you would make the little curly cues. So I'm going to make, so it's going to just tape around. And then when you get to the top of the wire here, okay, and then you're just going to cut this. And then remember, you're just going to just take this around. And then that's going to give you a little curly cue. See? All right, so if you're. So that gives you a little uh, curly cues we'll have for the sweet peas. Now, of course, you can have as many of these as you want. I mean, I'm just using three here uh, for the curly cues. All right, so um, obviously some of you are working doing this, so I'll give you a little bit of time to, to, uh, to do that. And, uh, but as I said, this technique is a really useful one to use. So if you've never seen how I do my pine needles, you see you just literally just twist the floral tape like this. And then once you twist the floral tape, you're going to do, you know, several meters or yards of this. But this is just done with the floral tape, this technique here. And then what you do is you're going to go around your fingers. So you just go around two or three fingers like this. I don't have a wire here, so I just, I'm just going to use a little bit of wire here. You see, and then you just would put a, a wire through here like this. You just twist it. Now in the case of when I, do, when I do pine needles, I do these in green, and then I take brown floral tape here. I'm just showing you this in green. Um, but I use this on like nigella, which is love in a mist, that has these leaves. Cosmos, all right, so all very useful uh, techniques. And then you see you just literally just cut this with your scissors. But if you watch my, um, watch my pine cone, tutorial, you'll be able to sort of see how to do those. And then you see this sort of gives you the pine needles, okay? And uh, so that's sort of how you do the pine needles. And then I show using glaze and then sugar crystals um, onto there. So it's a really nice technique to use, all right? So very, very useful to use for, um, for that. So, anyway, so that, that's your little um, tendrils, okay? Um, and then we're going to tape the leaves. Now the leaves you're going to tape, um, so those are going to be once dry tape halfway down using light green floral tape. So you're just going to start with your floral tape, 
just slide up to the bottom of the leaf. This one, obviously, I just borrowed the piece of the wire for my pine cones here, so for my uh, needles. We're going to come down about halfway down. Now, when sweet peas grow, all right, so just showing you here. And remember, whenever you're making flowers, like if you just do a search on like Google search, um, you'll see lots of, but um, when sweet peas grow, the actual sweet pea stem, all right, this is the stem, this is like a botanical drawing, but this is a, easy to see. But the, um, this is the sweet pea, how it grows. The leaves and the tendrils are separate from the flowers, all right? So when you actually buy, when you buy sweet peas, all right? So when you, if you buy sweet peas or you go in your garden and you pick them, that is basically what you get, you see, is the flowers and the buds. But, um, but when I do these in sugar or air drying clay, just aesthetically, I often like to integrate the leaves and the tendrils, although it's not botanically correct, throughout, because I think it just looks more attractive if it was going on a cake, all right? Um, and if you were gonna use your, um, like for example, your air drying clay, like in a little vase or something like that, uh, this looks nice just to sort of have them, um, have the, the foliage with them like this, all right? But you can do the, the tendril and the leaf totally separate to the flower, okay? And um, so those are, as I said, the little leaves. And then you're gonna put the leaves together in groups or two or three, all right? So I'm gonna just do a little group of two leaves like this. So pretty much I'm just gonna do them almost like side by side. I'm just gonna put the leaves in like so. I'm just gonna take this down. And then I've done a set of three leaves where I've just staggered them a little bit, one to the right, one to the left, okay? So you can just sort of do your leaves uh, to the right, to the left, like that. Now, when you when you are doing um, when you're putting flowers together, okay. So, like for example, when I teach the sweet peas in my class, as I said, I showed you the other day. When, um, for example, Patricia, who's watching, and several others, if you have been to my uh, flower classes here in Atlanta. So, when I teach the sweet peas, this is what my students make. So, the sweet pea doesn't have any uh, foliage in it. So, what we do is we put the calyx on. We make the tendrils, two tendrils. The students then tape these together. They add a 22 gauge wire at this point here. And then what they do is when they come up to dust the flower, it's much easier to take the flower like this and then go up to the table and then just dust it all at one time. All right, so generally the rule of thumb is if you can access all areas of the flower, which we can do here quite easily, it's usually easier to assemble first and then to, then to dust, okay? It's also sometimes, when you dust one individual flower and you're dusting all the flowers and buds individually, sometimes it's nice to sort of have an overview of what everything's gonna look like at one time. So a lot of times when I'm dusting, I personally prefer if I can access all areas to assemble, then put it together. Now, of course, when you have a situation like this where you have a, um, the foliage, all right, there are two options, okay? Either that you do the foliage separately then glaze it if you're gonna use spray glaze, all right, if you're using a spray glaze on air drying clay or sugar. Or alternatively, if you were doing a sugar one, you could assemble it, dust it, and then you would use a brush on glaze. So if you're using a brush on glaze like this, then of course you can put this together, you can dust the flowers, dust the leaves, then you can glaze the leaves. But if you're using a spray lacquer, or on your air drying clay, the spray um, uh, varnish, you would be not be able to do that, all right? So, so there's really, as I said, so you have options. But uh, sometimes, a lot of times, um, people prefer to sometimes dust the flowers separately and then put them together. So that's what I'm actually gonna show you today, uh, dusting these. Now, color, all right, color I'm gonna use is going to be a, um, as I said, I'm using a Cosmos pink color. So this is uh, one of my brand colors. Um, but as I explained the other day, what you wanna do is you're ever doing colors you're not sure about. Best thing to do is to just do a little test. Okay, so just make an extra little piece of paste because then what you can do is you can try that color out, all right, on your little sample first and then see how that looks, you see? So if, for example, that's gonna give us just a very subtle um, color on the edge, but if I wanted it to be a little stronger, then maybe I could take, for example, some American Beauty, which is a little bit stronger and also a slightly different pink, all right? So um, if you were doing with, say, like, if you wanted something a little bit stronger, you see I could take it, or the other option is, as I do a lot, is mixing the colors up. But see, so if I wanted a, just a slightly stronger color, you see, I could use that American Beauty, see? So you see how you get that more 
stronger color. So really, it's just all, always a question of just trying out. But if you have a little sample to try out on, because once you get the color on, as I always tell my students, you can always add, but you can't take away. All right, so it's always best to, to be sure the colors. Now, if you're doing in the air drying clay, we can go straight on and dust them. If you're doing sugar sweet peas, you may want to um, like do your leaves first and then come, just be careful of your little calyx on your sugar ones, all right? But anyway, so I'm going to take, I'm um, going to use the Cosmos color. So I'm going to use this pink. And uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to brush this. So I'm going to do this like on the bottom part of the beak. So I'm going to put the pink just on the sort of the bottom half of the beak. So just brush in from the bottom up. So you see how you're going to get this sort of slightly stronger pink on there. And then you can, and then when you do the, so you're going to do the same on the buds. All right, now remember you've got two buds. I've already done one of each of them, a flower and a bud. So you're going to put the stronger pink on the tip here. And then you're going to then just brush from the outside to the inside. So you're going to get this sort of pink color and going to do this also onto the back as well. But of course, you know, you could do like a yellow sweet pea with pink on it. You can do all different color. But you see how you're going to get this nice sort of subtle color, okay? And then on the flower, just need a little bit more color here. Now in classes, when I'm generally teaching in classes, I normally put the powder in little dishes, which I've shown uh, on some of my videos and that, and then I can just put that back in the container. And that way it's not really wasteful. It's just when I usually just do in one odd, one odd flower, I often just do it like this. And then we're just going to brush this over. Now because the air drying clay stays flexible, the nice thing about this is I can actually just hold this against my finger. You see? So I can actually use my finger here with the hardy clay. Let's see how I can just brush that onto, but you have this very, very subtle color. And you see how, because this is still flexible, you know, obviously I thought this was made Monday. So that's a nice advantage of the sweet pea. And so sweet peas were one of my nanny lodges, my grandmother, my, my, my dad's mom's side. She was, um, she loved sweet peas. So she was always remember as a child, her having the whole of her back fence was completely covered in sweet peas. So, you know, it's sort of like a lot of things we have childhood memories of, you know, smells or particular products, you know, like Lily of the Valley soap. She always used to wear Yardley, they used Yardley the Lily of the Valley soap. So, you know, Lily of the Valley is also a sort of, I always, signif significance with my grandmother. So you're going to put the, the pink around here. So you see how you're going to get the lovely color onto there. Okay, so that would be my pink. And then I'm going to take some prairie green. So I'm going to use just a sort of a softish green. Now remember, it doesn't want to be too dark. So if you've got only a stronger green, just add some corn flour, corn starch to it. And then what we're going to do here, we're going to just put the green. So the green is just going to go around the sort of the base here where the calyx is. All right, so that's going to, that's going to go around the base here where the calyx is here, okay? So just gonna just go in, in here. And remember, with your air drying clay or your sugar, just don't use too much egg white or glue because you don't wanna obviously get your, that on your um, brushes. And see, on this one here, I'm just gonna go just into the middle here. Just gonna just go around there like that, a little bit of green. And on, the, on this one, on the flowers, just put a little tiny bit of green on the back as well. Now I've already got my other two uh, colored. So these have already been colored. So I've got my color in. So you see my sweet peas are now sort of coming to life. And then we're going to move on to the foliage. So for the foliage, I'm going to use the here, the green. So I'm going to use my apple green, so just a little bit of a brighter green, you know, an apple-y, limey green. So it's going to do this all over. Remember, of course, you can put gloves on for this as well. So it's going to just going to go over the surface of the napkin. All right, so that's going to be my coloring. But you know, you can just when you're doing the coloring, you can of course just just um, put that put one color on, and then when you finish, you can just take the napkin. Another thing that works really well if you just buy really cheap paper plates, like from the dollar store, or pound store, just 
use those for dusting and then you fold the paper plate like a taco shell and it makes it very easy to get back into your um, piece or you can use like grease proof paper wax paper but generally speaking I like to work on the napkin as far as brushing or on a paper plate or a ceramic plate um, so the paste the powder doesn't go around too much. Now on this one I'm actually going to show you um, I'm going to use a liquid glaze here and this would also be like when I teach um, like when I teach my cherry blossom and my dogwood in my spring flower class, what we do when the students put their cherry blossom branch together, they just put it together like we're doing here. Then what they do is they dust the cherry blossom, they dust the leaves, and then they use a brush on glaze because then that way they're uh, not having to worry about cross-contaminating their, um, their uh, getting the glaze on their flowers. Because the glaze, we only use the glaze on, um, on generally on leaves, all right? There are actually only a couple of flowers that I use like the glaze on. That would be when I teach the anthurium, which is the red tropical flower, I use glaze, spray glaze on the anthurium. On some varieties of succulent, I do a very, very light spray of glaze on the succulents. And then um, also on uh, when I do uh, the slipper orchid, okay? And just give that a little brush. Now when you are using glaze like this, because naturally your brush is going to be have green on here, when you put this back in the container, eventually this is going to look a little bit like the swamps down in Louisiana. It's going to be like swamp water color, like green. And that doesn't matter because I only use this for, for, for leaves, okay? Question. Yes, question. Um, no, but you can, all right? So if you wanted to, you know, like if you wanted to put a little bit of color on the tendrils, you could totally do that, all right? Um, you know, like I've shown the dust in the stems, so you could put a little bit of uh, color on. I have also seen some people actually make the tendrils in white and then they sort of dust them uh, sort of a green color, so you get that sort of softer green. So just put those two to one side to dry. Now, once we get the, um, and if you have any questions, all right? so. Um, so as I said, when we, put, when we put this together, okay, we're gonna put this together. So we're gonna take a tendril, which is gonna go at the top, or you can do te two tendrils at the top. Like this one here, I did two tendrils at the top. This one, I have one tendril at the top. So it's really up to you how you position this, all right? And uh, remember also, if you're gonna be making a couple of sprays of these, so you can do, you know, one or two tendrils at the top here, like so. And then you're gonna take your smallest, bud, all right, so you're gonna just put your smallest bud is gonna go here like so. Now we're gonna take this with your half width tape. And sweet peas, I always usually use just the light green tape, okay? Now those of you in the UK, some of the manufacturers and some people in the UK call this Nile green. It's basically a bit like the color of the Nile, but a greeny sort of color. But uh, they call it Nile green, and uh, but you, we generally just call this light green here in the U.S. So it's just a sort of pale green um, color. So then you're going to put in your so then you're going to put in your first. So you can see here, you're going to put in your first bud. So I'm going to put in my first bud, and I'm going to put in my smaller set of two leaves. Okay. So you see how I'm just going to put in those leaves here. Now at that point there, but you see how you have quite an open look to that. You're gonna use the 22 gauge wire, which is just the half length 22 gauge wire. We're gonna use this as our sort of main stem. So you're just gonna put that in when you do the assembly here. So it talks about assembly. Start off with a bud and one tendril, tape down a little, open bud, add two leaves, a little further add, and then you can at this point 22 gauge wire. So basically like at this point or the next point. So you're not gonna put the 22 gauge wire right at the top there because then that means it's sort of you can, it's easier to bend it to give a nice natural shape, okay? And then you're going to take your, um, so then we're going to be putting in the second bud here. But they actually sort of come, you can sort of open those out a little bit as needed. So you're going to come down here. And then I'm going to. Can you still see yourself? Yeah. Somebody say they have the picture. It's probably just internet. Somebody's, I think, lost the image. It should come back or just refresh your browser. You know, sometimes when you're watching longer things like this, you just need to refresh your... Question, do you steam the flowers? Um, yes, so for sugar ones, but usually the best thing to do is just put it all together first and then steam it. And it does talk about that in your, um, there's steam to set and on air drying clay spray with unscented hairspray, okay? 
but generally if you know even if you've dusted the flowers separately as i said like we've done it's much easier it's like you know if you're doing say hydrangeas we steam them but it's much easier to put the 30 hydrangeas together first and then to steam them than it is to steam each individual one okay so we're just going to come down and then i'm going to put in my so you see i'm going to have in my other my other leaf here but of course um if you were doing these, like say on a grapevine wreath for your front door, which would be really nice in air drying clay, you might make them more open, like more longer and skinnier. And uh, so you basically can decide how. And then look, look at your flowers here. See, this one is just a little bit more open than this one. So I'm going to put this one in first. But usually just, I'm, I'm just, as you can see, I'm doing them so you almost go like, straight to the right, to the left, to the right, to the left. That's generally the way. And just remember, we talked about this in uh, actually the second lesson when I was showing putting together of flowers in sprays. You're always working odd numbers, okay? So here we have five, okay? You'd have seven. So you could have, you know, like three flowers, um, then you could do like two, two, and then one. But you'd always want to have, ultimately, you always want to have odd numbers, okay? For like we've got five leaves here and five flowers, okay? And you see how that goes together beautifully. And then you take this down. Now, if you were doing, if you're going to use this, for example, like to go uh, in a vase, this is just a little plastic vase, but let's say you're putting it in like a little glass vase like this uh, to go into the bathroom or bedroom or whatever. Then of course if you wanted to make the stem, if you wanted to make the stem a little bit more natural, what you can do is you can actually add a couple more, all right, so you could take just two more wires, you could just add those in, um, 20 gauge or 22 gauge wires, and then just tape them to make the stem thicker, a little bit like how I showed on the David Austin rose, okay? But the other way you can do that is you can also come down to the bottom, all right, and then what you can do is you can just tape up. This would be more if you're going to do it where you see the stem, okay, and then you can tape down again as well. So you'd almost do that like three times. Well, I'm excited to see everybody post um, their images. Um, of the sweet peas and see what different colors everybody made. It's been wonderful seeing all of your, I'm sure everybody's enjoyed seeing everybody's hibiscus, all the beautiful colors and uh, had some really stunning color combinations. All right, but there you see you'll have your, your sweet pea. Um, and um, so of course this um, in sugar could be used um, on a cake. You could do like a smaller spray with purple. You could do of course integrate this with roses. And sometimes when I use sweet peas what I actually do there is I use them uh, with roses with other flowers where I'll use the flowers individually. So maybe you might have the, the buds at the end of the spray. Remember in the first lesson I did the air drying clay little like bouquet spray. You could integrate the small buds and then you could go into your bigger flowers. Um, when you're using also flowers onto, uh, for example, especially more so in air drying clay, all right, so if you had the little, um, like a vase like this, all right, so if you have a vase like that, there is a product you can buy um, on the Amazon and uh, places like that. And what it is, it's like an, uh, an acrylic and you just mix as like a catalyst together. Um, there's two, just trying to find it on my, uh, but there's two, um, and what you actually do with it, I had it up in a second ago, there we go. Just waiting for the internet, there we go. So what, what it is, is it's like a, a, it's a resin water for a vase. So, okay, so there's, so there's several different, um, there's some that is like a, a, like little pellets. And what you actually do is that they, they just uh, melt them and they look like, uh, looks like water, but it's like a, almost like a jelly. All right, and then there's also this product here, which is called craft water. Okay, so it's a Floracraft product. Floracraft make a lot of, uh, um, they do actually, some of you have used their spray um, lacquer. Um, but Floracraft, but this is something you can find on Amazon. But what it is, is two little bottles of an, uh, resin and like a an catalyst. This is like a, a bigger version of it, which is more expensive. But uh, as I said, so what you do is you just mix those two together and then you pour it into your little vase and then you actually would just set your flower into it so like you would pour that into the little vase, you'd set your flower in and what I would normally do there is you'd use like a piece of floral tape, just go around like that and then you just would like use some tape on it, like to hold it like this, all right? 
and then when it's set, so what it actually will look like if you put this in a bathroom or a bedroom, it looks like a, you know, water in the little uh, vase. So it's a nice way with your air drying clay if you're doing this as a gift. Now do be a little careful. This is just actually a little plastic vase, but also be careful because some, um, some plastic has a, a, a obviously reaction to it and it will go cloudy. But I've used that in some uh, classes where I've done, um, where I've done cold porcelain things and set them in the, um, the glaze. And it looks like, as I said, it looks like water. Um, but, uh, but that's your uh, sweet pea. So, and you can see here that, um, you know, sort of shows the sweet peas. So, but you can see how beautiful they look if you did them, of course, like in a, so remember this one is a, this one is a sugar one, but you see, of course, those are all the same, um, all the same, uh, um, sort of color range, but you can imagine on a cake, if you had, you know, one in yellow, one in purple, one in pink, and then you had like, you know, you could do a nice bow there uh, to put them together, but a really, really nice uh, flower for, um, as I said, for, uh, for sugar, for craft, and uh, obviously very, very useful uh, flower to, to make, okay? But uh, as I said, so not, not such a, a complicated um, second part of the lesson, and uh, as I said, that would be um, obviously how to, to make the sweet peas, all right? So just remember, quick recap, all right? Monday, um, 11 a.m. USA Eastern Standard Time, 4 p.m. UK. Sydney Galpin is gonna be demonstrating how to use isomol in Flower Pro Nicholas Lodge products and also some of the Katie Sue products as well. Um, and uh, so Sydney will be doing that live. And uh, then as I said, next Thursday, a week today is gonna be a Q and A, all right? So again, that will start at two. I'll come on a few minutes before and it will be a live Q and A. But please, as I said, if you have questions, think about them over the weekend. Monday, I will post a, um, a post on the uh, uh, platform about that. And then just as I said, any comments, things, questions you have, that you'd like me to discuss, then I go through those and obviously be able to pull things I need for like little props or to show you or whatever. So uh, really anything, you know, related to flower making or, you know, coloring or anything, you know, like obviously we had some great questions before and I'm sure some of you can think of some, another round of great questions for next week, all right? Um, so anyway, so I hope everybody enjoyed today's lesson and uh, so take care everybody. I'm gonna answer questions as well and Scott's been obviously responding to some of the questions, but uh, you haven't, okay. So I'll be um, obviously responding to questions. So if you do have any questions, but also remember just if you have any questions, just post them after this is aired and then you can, um, that will be where the thread will be. I'll be able to answer those. And I look forward to seeing everybody's sweet peas once you get them finished. So, um, you know, today, tomorrow, over the weekend, uh, get your sweet peas finished and post them. And uh, we look forward to seeing those all and sharing those with all of our members. All right, so take care everybody and to our new members, welcome. And obviously we, each week we're having new members join us. So welcome everybody and uh, look forward to um, obviously working with you and looking forward to next week. So have a great weekend everybody. Sweet wishes, bye.